How long have we been live, though? Mulligan, let's start this over. Starting off with some news for you ladies and gentlemen. That DVW, Table Time, and 3D are going to be moving dates. Are going to be on new dates and time slots. That is correct. DVW Table Time is going to be airing Mondays at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And DVW 3D, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard on Wednesdays. That is right. So Monday to DVW and 3D. Now on some other news that we already know of, I'm just going to run down really quickly the next two pay-per-views of the cycle in four weeks time now four weeks from today i believe on the if i believe i'm if i believe this is right the 14th and 15th of november dvw will be having another dual pay-per-view event being dvw revolution and DVW behind bars. That is right. You can see those pay-per-views happen. And we're gonna start off with our with our and it's gonna be quite the beef of the still current number one contenders, the weapons of mass destruction. Please everybody give a warm welcome to Andy Douglas the Butcher. <laughs> That's not How are you doing, Butcher? I'm doing fucking swell! Shut the fuck up, you fucking audience! Well, what an introduction you have given us here tonight. Now, what do you think about your match? What about what happened at Bad Romance? There are a bunch of soggy cunts that are scared of the weapons of masters. And uh, what do you think about your upcoming match in, at Behind Bars and the fact that it's going to be in a steel cage match? They're going to have nowhere to run. Because we are the weapons of mass destruction. The 14th and 15th. And we'll fucking destroy any soggy cunts in our way. Well, that's quite, that's quite the call out. Anything you'd ask, would like to say? No matter where we are, whether it be All Star Wrestling, Apex Wrestling, IIW, weapons of mass destruction, we'll take on any teams, and we will go to war with them. Because we are looking for that fight. And we're looking for the glory. And that glory. A DVW behind bars. Is going to be those worms. So Silo Jordan. Johnny Farmer. Watch our fucking backs. Because we're coming for those titles. What words from the butcher. Uh, everyone, a round of applause for the butcher. Hey! Time to go and fuck my wife. No. <laughs> That's to say the least. But up next, um, we are going to be talking to a man that has ran the gauntlet, both figuratively and literally, at DVW Generations. This man lasted through five other competitors to win not only the match but the number one contendership to the dvw next gen champion and at dvw revolution he will be challenging jd rec for that title uh ladies and gentlemen give a warm round of applause to the one and only extreme ortiz
<laughs> uh, how are you doing, Ortiz? Hmm. How am I doing? How am I doing? A lot of people been asking me that since I ran this dang gauntlet, you know. Just go against so many people, just blood, sweat, and tear. But yet, lately, I've been saying J. I've been uh, hearing that JD assumes that I don't know who he is and J2 build and his most dominant faction, and all that. Very thing. The thing is, what he doesn't understand is I don't give a damn about any of that. Because ever since I stepped into this, this whole wrestling business, everyone, everyone wants to book me. Everyone wants to see what I'm capable of doing. But here's the thing. Everyone needs to understand you don't want to step in the ring with me. Because once you do, bad things happen. Interesting. But bad things happen. Go back on that gauntlet match. Um, were you? Uh, what did you feel when um, DVW management did eventually come to you and ask, "Would you like to be a part of the gauntlet?" Did you see that as the opportunity, and did you see yourself going all the way, or were you more just glad that you were able to get that time in the spotlight? I'll just put it like this. If an opportunity comes, I take whatever the hell I want. Whenever I want. But since management decided to make things fair, I want you to go show them what I'm capable of doing. Simple as that. I see. And it seems like you've already made your pretty clear uh, deal with him. Um, how are you worried at all that MBS is actually going to interfere? Now, they didn't interfere in JD's last match, but they were pretty preoccupied. Currently, as of right now, the rest of MBS, being Xavier Williams and Christian Taylor, are not scheduled to be a part of DVW Revolution, so they have quite the free schedule. Are you worried that they're going to stick their nose into things and cost you the match? Honestly, they can involve me after I take that championship on the ground, covering their own blood. I walk away, and I just ooh, and I just walk my path back to the shadows. Interesting. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Um, any yes, any um, any bouts that you have in in the foreseeable future that you'd like to uh, talk about? Well, as far as DBW is considered, pretty stacked roster so far. Uh, who knows? Maybe I might want to go against uh, Kyle Young. Maybe I want to take a shot. Lance, romance. Wow. Or maybe I might just, just do a tables match against Jimmy Darrow for the one time. <laughs> Whoa, calling out the roster. Decisions, decisions. I was talking about your escapades outside of DVW, but wow. I don't think we can top calling out the one and only Lance Romance. So I think, Ortiz, thank you for your time. Uh, everybody give a round of applause for Extreme Ortiz. Okay, here. All right, all right. Um, is a man that was not checked it out. I definitely recommend you see you go back and watch it because it was an amazing. Um, but on the pre-show, this man impressed enough to get match, and he showed why. I'm gonna stop rambling and bring this man in right now, ladies and gentlemen. Give a round of applause for Franco Ritchie. 
Hello, hello, hello. One second, your applause has not come yet. There it is. So few throws. That's definitely that's that's taking the Brandon Ace approach, but all right. Uh, Franco, how are you doing today? Are you feeling all right? After my match on GPW in that six man tag team elimination, I feel great. Hmm. Um, but okay, so let's let's uh first let's first talk about uh what happened at Bad Romance. At Bad Romance, the pre-show, <clears throat> to be exact, I sat down with Jimmy Darrow, and he was talking about his match with Mason, and I asked him if he has anyone in mind for his next challenger, and he brought you up. He brought on your debut here in DVW, attacked him from behind, and made a statement that you want that title. Um, so you got his attention. Could you, uh, do you see this leading into a match at behind bars? It better be, or else he can, or else he can run hiding. Like I said last time, that belt does not belong around his waist. It belongs around mine. He's a rookie. I'm a damn veteran. If you don't know and I'll say this again, Daryl, you don't know, I am a one-time hardcore champion on GPW for four months. I ruled that division. Now, many have forgotten that or that is my specialty. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's not going to my throat. Mm-hmm. Like I said before, Daryl's a rookie. He do not know what he got himself into coming to the match with me. Because I want to make sure that I'm going to put him not one, not two, but three fucking tables. And let him remind, and let that remind him that when you step up to the boss, the boss always wins. I see. I see. So, uh, very interesting that you bring up that you want to put Daro, especially through three tables. Are you, uh, challenging Daro to a, th- to a try tables match? What he faced, uh, what he did against me? Yes. Oh, well, we'll see if Daro is able to, it wants to accept that challenge or not. You have going on, Franco. If you guys know, I have a match against one of my best friends, turn enemy, K Dog, GPW, in a special match. I hope to see all you guys watching when I put him down for the count. Hmm, interesting. Anything else you'd like to say, Franco? No. I actually I gotta go handle some family business. All right. Well, you go do that, um, and we'll see what Dara says about your challenge. Uh, everybody, give a round of applause for Franco Ritchie. <laughs> all, right, all right. All right. So my next guest. Um, is a man that participated in the uh, in a ladder match at DVW Bad Romance for the DVW United States Champion, um, and was very close to getting it, if not for certain circumstances. Nevertheless, he was unable to win, um, and he has some choice words about the man that was not in the match. But has our physical belt. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for the second city soldier, Kyle Young. Hey, everyone. Hello, Kyle. How are you doing? As he saw Max Maximus, a guy not even part of a company or even part of a damn match, somehow he's the one who's allowed to freaking carry the United States title. The only thing I'm going to break up Brandon Ace on, on something, it's a travesty. Hmm. 
Interesting. I see. Champion, but yeah. Yeah. So thankfully, thankfully, um, Max is not recognized the physical belt. Um, and we have, we are, what has happened to you and what has happened to those 500 other individuals by this Monday at DVW table time, there being a six man match, a, a elimination six man match to determine the new DVW United States champion. Now, what is your thought process going into this match? It's not a ladder match, uh, just to make sure that that does not happen again. Um, but you still have to face the same six individuals or the same five individuals. Five individuals. Um, what's your thought process going into that match? It's a half to win. Because I need, I need to get the title back and get some honor back to snatch it from the more hardworking individuals that are around here. I see. And if Max... Uh, if it were to say Max uh, was here right now, what would you say to him? I beat you once, I beat you twice, I beat you three times already, and took the GPW United States Championship from you. I can do it again. I can take DVW United States title back away from your thieving hands. I see. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh my God. Is that... There's no way. No, there's no one. That... Wait right, a minute. Here he is. Max. Max Maximus is here, and he has the United States champion. Oh, hello. How are you all? How are you all? Oh, by the way, fuck you, Kyle. Um, but how are you all? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, well, fuck you too, buddy. I, I'm honestly, I, I. What are you doing here, Max? Coming with our property that you stole, basically. What are you doing here? <clears throat> well, let's see. I win your brand new, beautifully crafted United States title, and then the United States champion. Of course we don't, we don't recognize you. You weren't even in the match. Ah, uh, fucking technicalities. Ain't it a bitch? It's the rules. <laughs> You're a tool. Mm. All right, let, let's yeah. let's not devolve into name calling. Now, Max, like, what, did, what did you... Why did you come in here and and bring yourself into that ladder match? Why did you do it, Max? Because I wanted to make history a historical impact on your wonderful television program. I, I have made history now as the most viewed debut in DVW, DVW history. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't I think that's entirely that. correct, but it was the, it was a very big moment and what people were talking about coming out of Bad Romance. Now, if you were to gain W, but your catch was that isn't recognized as your champion. What, exactly would you have in store for if you were to get fully signed? That's a good question, Riley. That, I, I, I am Tony Sparacio, just... excuse me. Oh, sorry. You guys sound exactly the same. It's hard to differentiate you. Um, anyway, like I was saying, um, what I'm going to do, and what I have in store for DVW, is obviously I'll be taking back what was mine. It ain't yours, bitch! <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta get out of here for a minute. Alright, well that, that was Kyle Young, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I I guess I'm gonna have a one-on-one -on -one interview with 
with Max Maximus. Don't let the tail hit your door. Don't let the tail hit yourself out the door. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. My bad. <laughs> I believe it was you speaking about uh, uh, you were to get signed. Well, like I said, I'll be going back after what is mine. You know, the thing that's on my shoulders that nobody's trying to take away from me. Well, I don't know. I, I feel like there's plenty of people that will be lining up to try to take this belt from you in the name of DVW. And wait a minute. I think I'm hearing some right now, so I think you should uh, you should make your way out of here. Um, I'd say he wasn't even scheduled here for the broadcast, but ladies and gentlemen, Max Maximus to our next segment as he scurries away. See ya. Yeah, as we uh as we move on to our I believe this is our final segment of the night, we have a man that was uh at Bad Romance challenging for the DVW World Heavyweight Champion, um, and was not able to I I don't want to say wasn't able to get the job done, but did not walk away out of Bad Romance with the world champion because of the actions of One Shot Kid and his hit squad. As we're gonna see, we're gonna have an exclusive interview. From the one and only Lance Romance. Now, Lance, let's hear it for him. How you doing, everybody? It's good to see you, Tony. Pleasure having you on the board on this show. <laughs> um, I'm glad we can finally have you on, Lance. Now, I'm glad you're in good spirits, thankfully. But like, I know you can't be feeling well after after losing such a big time match. That was. Uh, and it's your second time losing the world title due to a circumstance that was out of your power, really. Like uh, last time, it was due to your concussion, and now it is due to well, one shot. <laughs> um, it is now due to one shot just sticking, uh, sticking it <clears throat> to you, really, by bringing his hit squad out and basically. I wouldn't even say you lost that match. Like that was. Really, just one shot, almost cowering away, getting scared of losing his title. Now, what's your thoughts on that? What's your thoughts on, um, on the outcome of Bad Rome? Well, I honestly thought that one shot did the exact opposite of what the world champion should do. When you think of the the Dudleyville Wrestling World Championship, you're supposed to be that fighting champion that would accept. All challenges, no matter what. And honest, easy way out, in my opinion, by hiring those goons. When it's triple power bombing me in the dead center of the mat. Like, nah. That's, that was very disrespectful to not only the owner, Riley Wolf, but to the whole Dudleyville roster. I see. And uh, it was at, in four weeks' time at DVW Behind Bars... You will be challenging once again for that world champion, this time in a steel cage. Now, what do you match? How do you think things are going to uh, go over with you and One Shot finally getting a one on one match with each other with no one interfering, no way of interference? Um, what is your, what is your <laughs> thought on that match? One Shot's going to wish he had. One shot. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> this match is gonna be more than just a match. One shot. After costing me that world heavyweight title, this past pay per view, there's no holding back, dude. You cannot escape. You cannot run. It's just you and me, in the dead center of that mat. Who knows? Blood will be fused everywhere. Bodies will be broken. I will walk away with that world title, <clears throat> whether you like it or not. One shot, mark my words. <laughs> this is only the beginning. Nice. I will get my revenge from your torment. How would I say this? Your foolishness of a reign as world championship, as the world champion. Wow, what words from Lance Romance um, about his match at at. Uh... 
at Behind Bars. Now, is there any other matches you're looking forward to seeing after we've confirmed two other matches, actually three other matches, I believe, Ortiz and JD for the Next Gen Champion, the tag title match between WMD and TBA, and the Women's Tag Team Champions. Are you looking forward to any of those matches? I'm actually looking forward for the tag, tag team gauntlet, actually. Just because of the surprise factor that any of tag team can show up for those women tag, women's tag titles. Who could, who's, for, who is the top notch that Riley Wolf has found or even was been confronted by to step foot into this Alivio arena for that, for those lovely titles. Yep. That's going to be, that's going to be history in the making. Definitely at DVW Revolution. Now, is there anything else you have upcoming? Do um, you have any big matches coming up? Well, this Sunday is the GPW pay-per-view. Uh, and I'm facing my what I thought was my good best friend, Sinistrad, in the, whole, in the ca- war cage match. I don't know what's up with Sinistrad, to be honest. He betrayed him when he was kicked out of Anarchy. I just don't know what's up with him, honestly. With I always been with him and for him the whole time. And when he him leaving Anarchy, it just gave him a whole different mindset all of a sudden about not only me but to Anarchy, the people that actually cared for him and whatnot. I see. Anything else you'd like to say, Lance Romance, before we uh close out? <laughs> 